bless you. May God continue to bless each and every one of us. Um, I'm going to be talking today or speaking from the book of Ephesians. So, and a man of God once said to me that if you are reading a letter, you cannot read a part, a part of a letter. You need to read the full letter to be able to understand what that particular letter is talking about. So I'm going to um, I'm going to go to the book of Ephesians, and it's going to read. I'm sure we've all had the opportunity of actually reading the whole chapter today. I'm sure some have not gone through a chapter in a while, but we can no longer say we have not uh, had the opportunity of going through the word of God today. That is uh, Ephesians chapter four. And of course that is, uh, I would like to use, first of all, start by thanking my father in the Lord and my mother for giving me this opportunity to bring the word of God to you today. And I've asked myself, when I was called upon to say this word today, I was given a particular verse to, uh, to, to deliver. And I, looked, of course, a week ago, I already prepared my message. And when that verse came in, it more or less said, well, I have to put aside that one. And I asked God, what would you like me to say? What would you like me to tell your people concerning this? And reading it, I was looking at the, first, the, the passage that I was giving without actually reading the whole um, uh, chapter, I'm not sure I would have been able to understand what the message or what it's actually saying. Because my, my focus was supposed to be on faith. But I'm sure as I drive along, uh, you'll be able to follow me and understand where I'm coming from. Father, Lord, my God, I want to thank you, Lord, for this time, for giving me this opportunity, for blessing my father and my mother, for also making building me up to become a man that is able to bring this world today. Father, I accept praise and worship. For those who are going to hear this word, oh Lord God, Father, I pray that God, that they will take something away from this world today and your name will be glorified. Your people will be blessed in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. I'm going to be speaking to you about the church that knows their God. Of course, if I'm in church, I would have been saying, say it along with me, but I'm sure you can all say it in your private living room. And of course, the team, I'm sure you all remember, because I believe you've listened to the, uh, the passage for over 3.59 minutes. And the main team I'm going to be preaching about today is Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. I will read. Until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. When I pick, when I got this scripture or this particular verse, I asked myself, what are the key areas that I must emphasize? The word that came to me first was faith or unity, unity, faith, knowledge, maturity. So I have decided to break this word down into those uh, elements in order for me to be able to speak to you today. For a church that knows their God must have faith. It is impossible for you to please God without faith. Of course, the Hebrew clearly states, April 11, 6, you see, and without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists, that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Of course, war faith. I ask myself, what does the word faith mean? When you have confidence in something that you know, when you believe in something, some people believe in uh, their football team. That's uh, sometimes I used to believe in my the super egos of Nigeria. But of course, I have been disappointed over and over and over again. Meaning that it is not worth me believing or having faith in them. Some believe in their music ideas. Some believe in their cars. Some have faith or sorts. But for those that have faith in God, have faith in God, are the people that know him, 
You, can, you cannot have faith on what you do not know. You cannot have faith in what you do not believe in. It's only when you believe as a well, I believe that if Pastor Davis tells me that he's coming to my house at 11 o'clock, I is likely going to turn up at 11 o'clock. Meanwhile, some people will tell me, a friend of mine will tell me, I'm coming to your house for uh, 12, 2 o'clock lunch, and it turns up at 6 o'clock at night. So if you have to be, if you are a believer of God, you must have faith. And it is impossible to please God, our Father, without this faith. God says in Isaiah 55, uh, verse 11, He said, My word shall not return to me void, but it shall come accomplish which I please, and it shall prosper. God was accomplished and prosper whenever He sent and whenever He supplied. That is why you need to find out what God says about your spiritual life. It is very important. How do you find this out? Is by reading the word of God. Fellowshipping with one and others. People believers, people who trust, who believe in God, like my people. And then apply this word to it. So the word faith, I will say again, without faith as a church, together, if we do not have faith, we ain't going nowhere. We cannot please God if we are true believers of God. Of course, I already talked about knowing him. You cannot have faith in what you do not know. Not possible, except you are deceiving yourself. It's what you know that you can have faith in. So you must know him. Jeremiah uh, uh, chapter 9, verse 23 to 24. Thou said the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his own wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Nor let the rich man glory in his riches, or let him who glory, glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, judgment, righteousness in the head. For this I delight, says the Lord. If you must, if you know God, you must not delight in, in, what, in your wisdom. You must delight in in the knowledge of what you know of God. You must trust him knowing him. You must read him, you must know what God wants you to do. It's like if you have a friend and you don't know this friend, you don't know whether the friend likes A or likes B. Or you cannot have a partner not knowing what the partner likes or no. Of course, a lot of relationships have broken down because of them saying, oh, I thought I knew you. I did not know, I never knew you could do this to me. With God, you do not have that kind of disappointment because the word of God clearly tells you the mind of God and what God wants you to do. And if you know him, if you know him, if you study him, if you let him speak to you at all times, you will enjoy his loving kindness. You will enjoy his righteousness. You will enjoy many things. Of course, this is the theme of, our, of, of, of the church for the year that we must we know him more. The more you know God, the more you will enjoy the benefit. The more you know God, the more you will have peace. The more you know God, the more you live a fruitful and a fulfilling life. Get to know God. Get to know him better. Get to know him day by day. It is very important. I wish I can reemphasize or, or, or stress the importance of this. You must learn to know him more by spending time with him, talking to him, doing things that God likes. And I will actually also stress further in Exodus 6, verse 6 to 7. Therefore says the children, uh, therefore says the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burden of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from the bondage and I will redeem you with an outreach arm and with a great judgment. I will take you as my people. I will be your God. There you will know that I am the Lord your God who brings you out from under the burden of Egypt. For those that know God, that is what they enjoy. If you know God, 
you know that God will rescue you from any form of issue. Bondage is not good. If you know God, you'll be rescued from bondage. He will stretch out his hand. I remember in those days, when I was a young man, no matter what issues I, that, I, that, that I do have, I may, that I may come across, when it's prayer day, prayer meeting day, I know that that problem will disappear on Thursday. I know for sure. I know because that was the level of my faith at the time. And of course, if you know God, the truth is this. You begin to behave like Christ. You, behave, you begin to behave like him. You begin to do things that he wants you to do. And then suffering shall no longer know your portion. So I pray this morning or this afternoon that we will know him more. That his grace will not depart from us. That his joy will continue to um, uh, uh, surround us in our day in, day out. May his grace not depart from you. Of course, if you have read the whole of we have, we have listened to the whole passage, we must be matured. We must be matured. It's very important for me to stress this. As a body of Christ, in 1 Peter verse, uh, chapter 2, 1 to 5, it said, put away all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all slanders like newborn infants. Long for the pure spiritual make that by it you, will, you may grow up into salvation. And if indeed you have tested the Lord that is good, as you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen as, and precious, you yourself, like a living stone, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Anytime I see this passage or I come to the rejected stone, it speaks to me. But first of all, I must be matured. Church, we have to be matured. We have to become a grown-up in the spiritual world. That is the only way we can do that is by putting all malice, deceit, and hypocrisy away. Let's begin to behave like Christ. There's a lot of work for us to be, to be done. And only if we come together, only if we come together as one body, the body of Christ, that is when we begin to make disciples of all nations, heal the poor, Provide for the needy. Refrain from selfishness. I mean, brothers and sisters, with maturity, I mean, let's say the church is open and somebody saying, I need a prayer. I need to go straight to the pastor. Even somebody by the doorstep say, what do you, what prayer do you need? I've got headache. Come, be healed. Even before getting to the pastor. In your day-to-day -day life, you can be exercising the spiritual gift that people will come to know God through the good work you're doing. That people will even follow you and say, well, if you're only praying for me in a, in a, in a, in a, in a pharmacy and I'm getting healed, <laughs> what more? If I come to your church, I wonder what is going to happen there. This is only possible, only if we put act of maturity. Brothers and sisters, it is time for us to come together as one people, stronger, matured, bound by the spirit of God. And let's go out, make a nation for Christ. I will conclude because I, uh, you must remember the Hebrew boys, the Shedra, Meshach, Abednego. You can find that in Daniel chapter 3. I'm sure you remember their story. Even though when they encounter problem with the king, and they said, you must bow to a uh, to foreign god. And they said, if I die, I die. For me, 
I'm not going to buy to any devil. I'm going to, I'm going to serve God. And they did not bow to any evil. That is an example of maturity in God. Remember the parable of the lost son, Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to 32. You'll be asking me, what is the connection? Remember, wherever you may be, if whether you've gone astray or you've gone to where you should not have been, know your position. Know that you are a prince and princess of God. Return back home. And for brothers and sisters who are the first son who did not go like the prodigal son, also remember that you need to exercise maturity, that be happy for the brother that returns back home. And you, I remember this elder son said, oh, father, I have stayed with you all along, but you did not throw a festive uh, period or throw a celebration for me. Exercise maturity. If you ask God, God will bless you. If you ask God, God will make way for you. So I thank you, brothers and sisters, and I pray that God today will enable you to be able to pick one or two things from what I have said. One, faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God without faith. You must have faith in God. You must build on this faith and exercise this faith. How is it possible or how can that be possible? You must know him and know him well. Know him. Know him by reading the word of God. Know him by fellowshipping with others. Know him by exercising faith. And lastly, maturity. Exercise maturity in all that I do. As my father has always done, I would like to, to do it. I'd like to follow his footsteps by setting, setting these three prayer points. So while we are going into prayer point, the first prayer point is, show me, Lord, what I can do differently in my job, school, church, and family. Show me, Lord, what I can do differently in my job, school, church that will glorify your name and bring unity to the church. Let's pray. Our Father, Lord, we want to thank you, Lord, this morning for your grace and for your love. Father, you reveal yourself to us, O oh Lord, mighty God. Show us what we can do in our day-to-day -day jobs, in our school, in our churches, and within our family that will bring glory to your name, that will unite your church, O oh Lord, mighty God. Father, I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And the second prayer point, bring the best out in me as you move increasingly in my life. Bring the best out in me as you move increasingly in my life. I believe all of you know that God is going to move increasingly in your life. But I pray that God will bring the best out in our life today. Father, Lord, I want to thank you, Lord, today. Father, Lord, I pray for each and every member of Christ the Rock Ministry, from the elders to, uh, to, to the, uh, the smallest child. Father, bring the best out in us. Bring the best out in us that we can, in, we can move increasingly in doing the work, your work and doing work that glorifies your name in Jesus' name. And the last, the last one which pertains maturity is help me, Lord, to put away hypocrisy. Help me, Lord, to put away hypocrisy. Know what my rights are in you and I'm able to take my true place in your kingdom. First one is put away all hypocrisy. Father, Lord, mighty God, if there's any behavior, if there's any character in me or in your church that is not pleasing to you, Father, help us to put it away. Father, I also claim this morning, O Lord Mighty God, that we we'll know our right. We we'll know our right and we're able to take our true place in your kingdom. Father, Lord, thank you, Lord, for everything. In Jesus' name, I pray. May God bless you and continue to bless you. Stay blessed in Jesus' name. Over to my dear pastor.